Restoring and rebuilding collagen is literally like taking a bath in the fountain of youth. But there's a major lack of science-based educational information online on ways that you can restore your own body's collagen. Collagen is one of the most important pillars in maintaining our youth as our bodies and our skin go through changes as we age. I think collagen banking will be the next big movement in skincare and anti-aging, but many people have never even heard of it. In today's video, as promised, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know on how to build, maintain, and restore your collagen. We'll discuss free options for building collagen, collagen supplements, collagen peptides, at-home remedies, in-office procedures, and many more things that you can do to maintain, build, and restore your collagen. In last week's video, we talked about collagen loss and things that we may be encountering on a day-to-day -day basis which may be damaging our collagen. So if you haven't watched that video, be sure to watch it so that you're not making these mistakes. Are you excited for today's video? I am. Okay, let's get into it. So we're gonna be hitting a lot of points today, so I'm going to touch on each topic just briefly. But if any of this interests you and you wanna hear more specifically, drop a comment in the comment section so that I know what you want me to teach you about. So what is collagen? Collagen is the major structural supporting protein in our skin and it lives in the extracellular matrix of many of our tissues in our body. Not just our skin, but our cartilage, our ligaments, our muscles, our eye. There are so many different organ systems that use collagen, but of course, as a dermatologist, I'm going to talk about collagen in the skin. So collagen is an extracellular matrix protein that is comprised of a triple helix of parallel polypeptide chains, and it's mainly comprised of proline, hydroxyproline, and glycine, and it's in a triple helix structure, and that is a molecular structural motif of this very valuable protein that we lose as we gain wisdom and have birthdays, but there are ways to increase synthesis and protect the collagen stores that we have. How is collagen created? Collagen is created inside the cells, the fibroblast cells, which are the cells in the skin that produce collagen, and inside the cell, intracellularly, there is formation of procollagen. Procollagen needs vitamin C as a cofactor to be synthesized. That doesn't mean that vitamin C has to be ingested when taking collagen peptides or supplements to become bioavailable, but it is an important cofactor in the collagen synthesis pathway, which we'll get to later. After the procollagen is made inside the cell, it gets transported outside the cell into the extracellular space and it gets converted into tropocollagen. Tropocollagen then gets crosslinked to form collagen fibrils and then those get together and synthesize and get packaged and bundled into collagen fibers. Collagen fibers are the major structural supportive protein in our skin, in our extracellular matrix. Babies and kids have a ton of it. We start to lose it as we gain wisdom and have birthdays. And it becomes, instead of these very strong, you know, supportive collagen peptides, they get fragmented and they get degraded and they get damaged by free radicals or UV light or blue light from our devices or environmental toxins or pollutants or foods that we're eating with high glycemic indexes, which are going to glycosylate them and cause damage. So you want strong structural supportive collagen peptides proteins and when it gets degraded they become dysfunctional flimsy then we start to get lax skin we get fine lines and wrinkles our pores get stretched out acne scars start getting stretched out so when we do things to build up our collagen stores all that gets better is it too late for me to rebuild collagen in my 40s 50s 60s 70s and beyond and the answer is no you guys have to remember your skin is a dynamic, breathing, living, responsive organ system. It responds to stimuli. It responds to trauma. It's an alive, dynamic organ system. So if you start taking care of your skin later in life and say you've thrashed your skin up to this point and you've never used sunscreen and now you want to turn things around now that you've hit 50 or 60 and you want to start using medical grade skincare products and you want to start using photo protection and sunscreen and doing lasers to reverse that sun damage it's never too late you should see some of the patients that i see in my office who just started caring about their skin in their sixth and seventh decade in life and you should see the responses that i see i just had a woman just yesterday who came in who's almost 70 years old and she said up to one year ago she never cared for her skin and now she's using medical grade skincare products she's using mdr she just had her first co2 laser one year ago and her skin was flawless people stop her in restaurants and in the store to ask her what she's done for 
for her skin. So it's not to say if you've never taken care of your skin that you can't be responsive. I've had patients come in in their 70s saying, oh, Dr. Cabell, can I not have Thermaja? Is it too late for me to stimulate collagen? Absolutely not. It is never too late. And you should see some of the transformations that I see in my office from some of my more mature patients who never took care of their skin before, who've completely changed their skin and turned it around. Let's talk about collagen myths. Collagen myth number one, I'm too old to stimulate collagen. That is absolutely false, false as I just talked about. It's never too late, your skin will respond and it's never too late to stimulate collagen and we can do it in someone who is 100 years old and beyond. So never think that. Collagen myth number two, collagen supplements don't work. Now, there is a lot of controversy about collagen supplements and because the studies are heterogeneous and because a lot of them are produced by manufacturers of collagen supplements or collagen peptides, they're skewed data. But I can tell you, as a provider who sees hundreds of patients each week who has been in practice almost 20 years, anecdotal data, seeing it day in and day out, and taking collagen peptides myself and kind of testing it and taking a break and seeing what it does to my skin, I can assure you that collagen peptides, when it's the correct formulation, seeing patients who do take collagen supplements, especially after their skin is upregulated to synthesize collagen, for example, after a thermage procedure, after a laser resurfacing procedure, after a peel, or after starting them on skincare products that have active ingredients that upregulate collagen synthesis in the skin, they absolutely respond to collagen supplements and collagen peptides. That's not to say that is a true statement for all collagen peptides or supplements, and I'm not going to promote one brand or another because I'm not sponsored, but there's a lot of marketing out there, a lot of brands that will just take your money and do nothing because it's really imperative that a collagen supplement has certain things. It must be hydrolyzed. The bioavailability must be optimal. It must contain the peptides in small enough fragments so that they can be taken up by the bloodstream through the GI tract and transported to the skin where they're upregulated to be taken to where the fibroblasts, the collagen producing cells, take those peptides and translate them into collagen pe proteins. So it's a loaded question, but it is a myth to say that collagen peptides and supplements don't work. Some of them may not, but a lot of them do, and you just have to find the right one. Another collagen myth that I see is you have to take collagen with vitamin C. That is untrue. As I mentioned before in the collagen synthesis pathway, vitamin C is an important cofactor in the synthesis of collagen, but that is different than needing vitamin C to be ingested at the same time as collagen peptides to be absorbed and bioavailable for uptake through the GI tract. So they don't have to be taken together. But yes, vitamin C is an important cofactor in the collagen synthesis pathway, but it is not true to say that you need vitamin C to uptake and absorb collagen peptides or collagen supplements. Another collagen myth is that liquid collagen peptides are better than solid or powder state collagen peptides, and that is untrue. They've actually studied this and the increased bioavailability of powder supplementations of collagen peptides is uh, more effective and efficient than the liquid form. So hydrolyzed, you want the solid or powdered state instead of the liquid state of collagen peptides. And then last but not least, they've done studies, bovine collagen peptides are more effective than marine or other forms of collagen peptides, even plant-based. So sorry to say, but they've done investigative research on this, again, heterogeneic studies, but even a meta-analysis and anecdotal data and also seeing patients who I see in my office who have in-office procedures and I switch them from their liquid collagen peptides or marine collagen peptides and put them on the vital proteins, bovine collagen peptides, their skin actually responds better and they will report back to me that they see you know, an increase in their skin's elasticity and the fullness and the smoothness and texture of their skin. You know, you always have to be careful with citing studies online because you can look on Google and see all kinds of scientific literature, but Again, there are heterogeneous studies. They're not comparing apples to apples. And also, I happen to have this right here. This is a peer-reviewed journal. This is Lasers in Surgery and Medicine, and you have to be a member of ASLIMS in order to receive this journal. So ASLIMS is the American Society for Laser Medicine and Surgery. There is one for the American Academy of Dermatology, which we call the JAD, or we call it the Blue Journal. There is the Dermatologic Surgery, what is, which is the um, periodical or the peer-reviewed literature journal for um, the uh, ASDS, the American Society for Dermatologic Surgery. Case in point, what I'm trying to say is this is peer-reviewed literature, guys. When you guys are citing studies because you're doing a Google search and you're saying, oh, well, there's a study that showed that you know this collagen was better than this collagen supplementation, usually those are manufacturers of those 
products that are promoting those studies and having these third party you know, companies run these studies for them and then they you know, post them all over the internet. In order to get a published, this is real peer reviewed journals and articles and studies. In order to get published in one of these guys, usually the general public doesn't have access to these. You have to pay to be a member of the society. You have to show your board certification and your credentials to even become a member of these societies. And when you're a member of these societies, you get the real peer reviewed journal articles. Like th this is what they really look like. This isn't the stuff that you guys are seeing on Google when you're doing your searches for collagen peptides. I mean, look at this. This is evaluation of cutting efficiency and thermal damage during soft tissue surgery with a 940 nanometer, that's the wavelength, diode laser and ex vitro study. So this is what a real peer reviewed journal article and study looks like. Not the ones that you guys are referencing when you're saying, oh, I read that this study showed that this collagen supplement does you know, this. Again, those are usually promoted by the manufacturers and these studies are executed because they're being paid by the manufacturer to make them. So unless it's in one of these peer reviewed journal articles, which usually most people don't have access to, unless you're a physician and you meet the criteria to become a member of one of these societies, those, science, those studies don't really mean anything. It's just a bunch of fake science and fluff. Sorry to let you in on that nasty secret, but we have to maintain the integrity of this specialty here. And I'm here to educate you guys and make you aware of the kinds of fake science and fake studies that are out there. Okay, you guys, don't judge me for my messy house, but it is a beautiful day outside and I cannot wait to get out to the beach. Okay, but do collagen peptides really work? So again, that's a very controversial topic and the reason why it's so controversial is because the studies are heterogeneous and it's very difficult to study. But what we do know is that hydrolyzed collagen peptides work better than just ingesting meat or or protein or glycerin or bone broth because you need the key amino acids, the hydroxy, proline, proline, and glycine to increase collagen synthesis and collagen stores in the skin. So we know that. So you want it to be hydrolyzed. You want it to be devoid of any metals or toxins or you know things that could be harmful to the body. Of course, that goes without saying. And you want it to be bovine. Bovine collagen has been studied in comparison to marine collagen and other forms of collagen, and it has proven to be more efficacious in skin rejuvenation. So hydrolyzed, bovine, and then also the solid powder forms of um, you know collagen peptides are more efficacious than the liquid format or the formulation of uh, liquid collagen peptides, which is kind of counterintuitive because you would think that a liquid would be more bioavailable and more easy to absorb through the GI tract than the powder form, but it's not. So um, just keep that in mind. So those three key components are really important when trying to decide which collagen peptides um, to use. I use Vital Proteins Collagen Peptides. I'm not sponsored by them. This company doesn't even know what I exist, that I exist. But, you know, as a YouTuber and as a physician, I have taken an oath to never do paid partnerships. I don't do sponsorships. Even if this company wanted to pay me, I would refuse payment because I want to recommend what I truly feel is best for my patients, not because I'm in contract or getting some big check from the company to do so. And I think that sets me apart from most dermatologists and physicians on YouTube these days. It's either you have physicians who are on YouTube and taking paid partnerships, or you have physicians who are not on YouTube who just recommend what they truly feel is best um, for their patients and are actually seeing patients day in and day out in their clinics or not at home making videos all day. That's why my videos usually suck because I'm usually in the office seeing patients. In order for collagen peptides to be transported and used in the skin, as opposed to going to build muscle or cartilage or tendons or bones or eye tissue, it has to, a lot of things have to happen. First of all, it has to be ingested and it needs to be broken down in small enough pieces to be uptaken and absorbed through the GI mucosa into the bloodstream. So that's part one. Once it's in the bloodstream, it needs to be transported and upregulated to the skin, especially in the reticular and papillary dermis where collagen is synthesized by the fibroblast cells. So it has to be ingested, absorbed through the GI mucosa, taken into the bloodstream and taken to the skin. So it's kind of like being a passenger on the bus. So if you think about a collagen peptide, say it's proline or, or hydroxyproline or glycine, one of the peptides or amino acids, how is that going to take the bus and be transported and get off at the skin as opposed to getting off in the eye organ tissue area or the muscle or the ligament or the bone? 
This is what I've found through just research studies that I actually conducted when I was in medical school and back in the day. When your skin is upregulated to make collagen, there's more of a demand. There's like a sink is what we call it in science. When something is drawn to something, there's a need for it, there's a demand for it, there's an upregulation and an uptake in the peptides when that organ system has a higher demand for it because it's stimulated to make more of that protein. So say you do a Fraxel and your fibroblasts are wanting to make more collagen and you ingest collagen peptides that are bioavailable, they get transported through the bloodstream, they're gonna, they're gonna be more transported to the skin as opposed to the other organ systems because there's a higher demand for it because the skin has been stimulated to make more collagen. So I hope that makes sense. So Justin's sitting here making sure that I stay on time. You get in it, babe. But this is how I take my collagen peptides. I love this. What does this mug say? Good things come to those who work their asses off. Mm -hmm. I put one scoop of my Vital Proteins collagen peptides in my green tea. I use this scooper because it used to come with a plastic scooper, but you don't want it to, you don't want that in your collagen peptides. And I just take it with my, my green tea. He's mad at me because I'm late for brunch. But anyway, this is how I take my collagen peptides. I do one scoop in the morning and one scoop in the evening. Sometimes I do it with, what do we drink at night? for our tea, like a chamomile tea, our nighttime tea, and um, I usually put one scoop in my nighttime tea and one scoop in my morning gray tea. And that's how I take my collagen supplements. Okay, we're gonna Thanks go. Thanks for BDs. <laughs> Thanks my BDs. So at-home devices, do those work? So unfortunately, I see a lot of my dermatology colleagues being affiliates and in paid partnerships and contracts with at-home devices that are very expensive. They're getting huge checks and cutbacks from these companies, but to be honest, I don't think that many of my esteemed colleagues would recommend at-home devices. They can be very expensive. Um, they take up a lot of your time. And I don't think a lot of them have been shown scientifically to increase collagen stores in the skin. We have to be careful with a lot of these at-home LED devices because they can cause hyperpigmentation, brown spots, melasma. Um, I see patients every day in my office who come in for laser treatments for hyperpigmentation and brown spots that they say that they've noticed after using these at-home devices, especially the light therapy ones. So just be careful because it can you know, cause hyperpigmentation and you get an at-home device to stimulate collagen and tighten your skin, but instead you get a bunch of brown spots. So just be careful with that. The at-home devices that work a little bit better are the microcurrent devices. However, those just cause muscular contraction to lift, tighten, and pull, and tighten, but Again, they don't last more than 24 hours. At-home devices has no FDA regulation or no accountability and any company can say any device does anything without really any um, ramifications if there's any um, you know, complications or lack of um, response or lack of results or you know, any deleterious outcomes. So just be careful with at-home devices. Best diet for maintaining and building collagen. So you want a diet that's rich in antioxidants, green antioxidant superfoods, um, green leafy vegetables, those are packed full of antioxidants that are going to be free radical scavengers. It's going to bind up free radicals that can otherwise denature, degradate, and fragment collagen. So you wanna also um, try to avoid dairy, especially dairy with hormones. You want to avoid high glycemic index foods because glycosylation of the collagen molecules can increase its degradation and dysfunction, causing fine lines, laxity, wrinkles, and saggy skin. Okay, topical collagen creams. Do do they work or are they a waste of money? The problem is, is that collagen is usually such a large molecule that it's not going to be absorbed or passed through the epidermis and get into the dermis where it needs to be. It may have some humectant effect on the skin like hyaluronic acids, also a very um, large molecule. The collagen on top of the skin is not going to be absorbed and um, transported down into the reticular and papillary dermis in the, screen, in the skin, it's just too big. So what do I do at home for collagen boosting as far as skincare is concerned? Of course, Tretinoin is something that every dermatologist loves. If anyone online is saying the tretinoin is bad for your skin or it thins the skin or anything that's inaccurate like that, usually they are non board certified dermatologists. These skin experts, usually it's someone who can't sell this or prescribe it online because they have an online skin store or they're not a physician so they can't prescribe it. So of course, they're gonna say bad things about it because they can't sell it to you. But tried and true, and they even ask us on our dermatology boards, they teach us this in our didactic lectures in our dermatology residency, tretinoin is one of the most impactful collagen boosting actives in the skin. However, you have to start low and slow and it may not be for everyone and everyone's skin may not be able to tolerate it given your type of skin, other actives that you're using, the time of year, environmental factors and so forth. So if you haven't watched my video on how to use a tretinoin, I recommend you watch that and it may be um, helpful if you're just starting out. But as far as tretinoin, I actually use a 0.05% on the backs of my hands 
every night and I just use it straight up. As far as my face, I use a 0.025% tretinoin and I mix it with my NMF hydrator and I just do that once a week. Two pumps of this pea-sized amount of the tretinoin and chef's kiss, it just does wonders for my skin. Now on the nights that I don't use my tretinoin, I use my full MBR skincare line. I wanted to engineer a skincare line because I've studied the skin for decades of my life and as a Mohs micrographic skin cancer surgeon, I spend a lot of time looking at skin under the microscope. When I was fresh out of my fellowship and residency, I was poached by numerous big pharmaceutical companies asking me to formulate and engineer skincare products for them. They wanted to cut corners and they basically just wanted to use the information in my brain to formulate for them so that they could, you know, sell skincare products to the masses or white label or whatever. But instead, I wanted to engineer a skincare product in a line that had integrity, that had scientific backing it up, and that stayed on top of science and technology and new discoveries made in the skin. It's really fun and creative for me, but also making these products for my patients and seeing the effect that it has on them. I could spot somebody on MDR skincare the minute I walk through the door at a new patient consult because they just have this glow to their skin. Their skin is like healthy from a cellular level. There's no makeup, there's nothing needed to cover up blemishes and their skin just is beautiful and it's something that comes from within. So it's really rewarding for me to have the skincare line. And because I know what's in these products and I know what other skincare lines lack, it's hard for me to deviate from using these products. One of my favorite collagen boosting skincare products is the RxR Retinol. The RxR Retinol has a micro encapsulated vehicle delivery 1% retinol that packs a punch with efficacy because it's a smart retinol. It does all the things that we want a vitamin A derivative to do without all that sensitization and irritation that vitamin A derivatives can cause. So the RxR Retinol is probably one of the most powerful collagen boosting serums in the skincare industry. And the ECM eye serum is a close second because this is just engineered specifically for the eyelid skin to help boost collagen stores. The ECM eye serum, ECM just stands for extracellular matrix proteins, including collagen. When we increase collagen stores under the eyes, it gets brighter, tighter, smoother, and just more youthful looking. So the eyelid skin is different than other areas of the skin. It has a different glandular composition, different histologic composition, and different vehicle delivery systems that need to get those actives where they need to go into that thin infraorbital under eye skin. So this once, twice a day is one of my staples. This is in, imperative for collagen boosting and this is how I keep my under eyes nice and smooth and tight. Remember, I'm 46, you guys. I'm on the other side of 45. So I really have to uh, maintain my collagen source, especially under the eyes, because that's the first area to show our age. Um, in addition, vitamin CFK is a collagen boosting CoQ10 um, multi-antioxidant L-ascorbic acid containing vitamin C blend that helps boost collagen stores. It's also great for anti-aging, anti-melasma, fine lines, wrinkles, all the things. And it's great for my beauties with sensitive skin. Um, Nectite is another really um, impactful collagen boosting serum for the neck and decollete skin to keep that skin smooth and tight. You guys, I live on the beach. I've lived on the beach my entire life. I surf, I play outdoors. I'm the mom of two very active kids who I'm very involved in their lives, which includes outside activities. But using my neck tight twice a day and photo protecting my neck and decollete has really um, helped keep that skin nice and smooth and tight. Okay, you guys, my armamentarium for collagen stimulation at home. And these are all just kind of grubby and real life because I use them all the time. So to learn more about those products, you can visit our website, but collagen boosting, this is all I've used for the last three years because after engineering and formulating these products myself, I can't use anything else because I know that the best of the best is in these bottles. So that's my collagen boosting at home. And of course, you know, I keep up with laser resurfacing, I do thermage, I do um, peels, and I do a lot of in-office procedures to keep my collagen stores boosted in my own skin. Because now that I'm older, I rely less on fillers and other means of tightening skin and resurfacing and rejuvenating the skin because I wanna do things that are going to stimulate my skin's own regenerative processes to increase collagen stores, and that's the true meaning of anti-aging. And I feel the most natural looking, youthful, healthy skin. Okay. Next, I wanna talk about treatments in office that can synthesize collagen, boost your collagen stores, and collagen bank. So collagen banking is one of the key terms. I'm gonna take, we're in the office right now, so I'm gonna take you around with me and show you some of my favorite treatments for collagen banking. I'm gonna start with the OG of collagen banking, and this is the Thermage Street. Okay, we have to take a break really quick and look at this sunset. I mean, it's a beautiful day. I get easily distracted. So collagen banking with Thermage. Thermage was one of the first treatments that coined this term because it increases our collagen stores to help lift, tighten, and pull on saggy skin or you know wrinkled under eyes or wherever area you wanna have Thermage treatment 
But more importantly, it increases collagen stores that is a very proactive approach, especially for my younger patients who come in and they notice a little, start starting to see a little bit of sagginess in their lower face and they want to do something to boost their collagen to not only snatch it back up, but also to prevent, you know, sagging skin at an accelerated rate. So that's the true meaning of anti-aging. So here's the Thermage I'll show you. And Thermage is my baby. It's been working very hard all day because we've been doing Thermage all day long on our patients. This is actually the eyelid handpiece. It's this little green handpiece um, that's specific for the eyes. But Thermage is one of the best treatments to collagen bank and to restore collagen in the skin. And it's a proactive approach because once you're increasing your collagen stores, you're putting yourself in a good position and staying ahead of the curve because we lose 1% of collagen each year or 10% of collagen each decade. So Thermage is one of the best treatments, in my opinion, in, you know, in collagen banking and um, boosting collagen stores. So other treatments, which I'm about to show you, like lasers, um, Fraxel Laser, this is Fraxel Dual, um, also known as Fraxel Restore. It's a 1927 nanometer and 1550 nanometer handpiece laser. Basically, it's a resurfacing laser that does a lot of things to the skin, and one of the things that it does is increase collagen collagen stores. So it, it you know helps with fine lines, wrinkles, texture, shrinks pore size, um, helps you know um, remodel acne scars and so forth. This is a CO2. CO2 is a little bit stronger. That's um, that is a non-ablative laser. Sorry I'm all over the place. That's a non-ablative laser my fraxel restored. This is an ablative laser and this is a CO2. CO2 um, helps increased collagen as well and the skin helps remodel scars helps to smooth fine lines and wrinkles helps to improve texture so this guy is a little bit bigger gun than this guy both are amazing both are my workhorses in my office along with thermage sometimes we've th combined thermage with fraxel or com combined thermage with co2 we'll call it thermofrax or thermo co2 this is the clear and brilliant and clear and brilliant is a light resurfacing fractionated laser that helps um, do a lot of things it helps with pigmentation texture pore size and it also increases collagen there's like no pain or downtime with the clear and brilliant when done correctly which is a really great treatment to increase collagen stores this is elicor this is the micro coring um, technology elicor micro cores skin out for skin tightening so it's fda approved for the treatment of um, fine lines wrinkles laxity on the lower face um, it basically works by tightening the skin through skin excision removing microcores of skin out we're having great results with that i'll post those in upcoming videos soon it's on my to-do list um, but also um, helps increase a uh, collagen synthesis as well then we have biostimulatory fillers. Mary, if you're watching this video, you're gonna kill me because I'm gonna totally mess up all of our <laughs> cabinets here. So we have every filler, biostimulatory filler um, as well. So Radius is calcium hydroxy apatite. This is a biostimulatory filler. It works really well for um, collagen boosting. I love Sculptra. I've done a video recently on Sculptra. Sculptra is another biostimulatory filler. This is calcium hydroxy apatite. This is polylactic acid both um, induce a fibroblast which are the collagen producing cells in our skin to make collagen so we have peels chemical peels that help synthesize collagen i'm not a big fan of microneedling but microneedling in theory can stimulate collagen we also have pdo threads that can help stimulate collagen lots of different ways that we can stimulate collagen and boost collagen stores in our office pdo threads are um, threads that mechanically lift like we could do like a little lifting or neck tightening or even like brow lift or um, lots of different things that we can do with PDO threads but it's like a slow depot of filler and biostimulatory filler so that stimulates collagen synthesis too I don't have a soft wave or an old therapy they're not my favorite energy-based devices I love a thermage a lot better which is why thermage made the cut for being in my office but those are also energy-based devices that can stimulate collagen synthesis too easy gel so this is another gel like biostimulatory filler that uses your blood components like platelet rich fibrin platelet rich plasma um, and it's combined with a biostimulatory filler to stimulate collagen synthesis in the skin I haven't decided if I'm a fan of it yet or not. We're actually going to um, kind of play with the Easy Gel in our office and see if it is what it's hyped up to be. If any of you guys have had Easy Gel and have great things to say about it, I would love to hear. Um, I haven't really seen any really impressive scientific literature on it, but in theory, it can also be a biostimulatory collagen stimulating um, procedure as well. So 
Um, it was getting a lot of positive feedback at our academic meetings. I just lectured at the AAD, which is the American Academy of Dermatology meeting, just on Monday a few days ago, and um, it was getting a lot of good feedback. So I'm gonna look into that one for you guys too. Um, but those are in-office procedures that we can do here to stimulate collagen. So Thermage is the true collagen baking energy based device. It is the device company that coined the term collagen baking because it increases your collagen stores so much that it is one of the most potent proactive treatments that you can do to really maintain your youth. And it's the true meaning of anti-aging. I've had Thermage done four times in my life. I did it at 30, 35, 40, and 45. And it's one of the best things that I've, I've done to keep my lower face um, collagen stores up and also under eye as well. Keeping the under eye nice and smooth and tight with Thermage is one of my favorite treatments for it. A lot of providers don't do that under the eyes because they're uncomfortable putting an eye shield in and they're not very, you know, comfortable treating the eyes. If someone's not comfortable treating the eyes, you don't want them touching your eyes. Last but not least, the question of the day is does self-tanner cause collagen breakdown? So you've heard of the sugar sag and the DHA, which is the sugar that makes our skin have a non-UV tan, can actually be glycosylating and glycating the skin collagen proteins and increasing their breakdown and causing skin laxity and texturized skin. So this is terrifying because as a proponent of non-UV spray tans, I've been getting them since college. It's hard to say and honestly, I'm terrified by this question and I'm hoping that it's not a true phenomenon. But what I can say is trying to analyze the situation as a scientist and as a doctor and as someone who's studied this skin extensively for 20 years, I can say that the DHA is the sugar that is known to dye our skin and give our skin that beautiful bronze tan look. It is a sugar and it can increase glycosylation of the proteins. However, the stratum corneum, which is the uppermost layer of the epidermis, which is the superficial most part of our skin, is a very thick layer of dead skin cells. Those are little dead keratinocytes that basically aren't even alive anymore. You can think of them as a bunch of dead bodies that are protecting the skin's viable alive bodies underneath. And if DHA or the sugar that's in a spray tan is sitting on top of the stratum corneum, that's your barrier. That's your skin's barrier to keep the outside world from coming in. Your barrier in your epidermis is the part of your skin that protects your skin from microorganisms, allergens, toxins, pollutants, DHA, from coming into the skin way down past the epidermis into the papillary and reticular dermis where the collagen would have to be to get glycosylated and damaged. So for the DHA, which is the sugar and spray tans, to get all the way down there to have an effect, I feel like is very low risk and I'm probably just saying this because, well, I'm really trying to rationalize it and think of it like from a scientific perspective and a physiologic perspective, how that would happen in a pharmacokinetics perspective, and that's how I would process it. But I'm just hoping that spray tans don't cause glycosylation and breakdown of collagen. But I do have to say, I've been getting spray tans since I was in high school, and I'm 46 years old, and the skin on my body hasn't really seemed to really take a hit. Now granted, I've taken great care of my skin since I was a teenager, I wear sunscreen and I kept the better part of my 20s and 30s inside a hospital working or in the library studying because I was a total nerd. So maybe that's why my skin is still, you know, with pretty good texture. I also, you know, sometimes use tretinoin mixed with body creams. I've fraxled probably every single part of my body, um, but I haven't noticed personally any sagging skin on my body that I can contribute to a spray tan and I've done my fair share of spray tans throughout my life because I never wanted a real UV tan. So I'm, I guess the verdict's not out on that. So drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about spray tans. I try to avoid them when I can, but I do like to rock a bikini every summer and I live on the beach. So um, I am guilty of getting spray tans. So hopefully they don't glycosylate my collagen fibers, but it doesn't seem to be doing so up to this point. So protect yourself from collagen breakdown. If you missed my last week's video, be sure to refer to that one because um, it will tell you everything you need to know and um, you know mistakes that you can avoid to help protect the collagen stores that you have. Okay, you guys, that's it for part two of collagen boosting and collagen banking. I hope you found this video useful. As always, I love you guys and thank you so much for your support. You guys give me incentive and inspire me to make these educational videos for you guys because you're so thirsty for this information and so well informed and so smart that I just love to make these videos for you guys. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you next week.